Welcome back, everybody. Um, and our next session, as I said, is with Dinesh Malkani. He's the CEO and founder of Smart and Spaces. And he's going to be talking about best practices for transitioning to hybrid workplace. So how businesses adopt hybrid working will not only define the initial success in bringing their people back to work, but it will also help them stay relevant in the future and harness the benefits of transitioning to a hybrid workplace. Dinesh is going to discuss the experience of businesses in over 50 cities globally and how technology plays a role in making this transformation a success. So welcome, Dinesh. Thank you very much, Thorin. And uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to take the next 20 minutes just walking through certain learnings and experiences that we've had and then hand it back for any questions that the audience may have. So thank you for that. So I'm going to walk you through that right now. Um, so, you know, first thing is, by the way, that was an excellent session that we just concluded. And I sort of heard that and I looked at a lot of reports that are out there, right, whether from Gartner or Mercer or other companies that are looking at it. And there were three takeaways that I've had from all the most recent surveys that I've seen. I think the first is that most definitely, when you look at the new future workplace, you look at the modern workplace, uh, people do agree that, you know, they would like to cut cost. They, they have a particular portfolio. They want to try and squeeze that up a bit. They want to better utilize it, right? People do agree that hybrid working in one sense for the ones that have tried it um, is turning out to be, uh, you know, productive from a perspective of being the same before the pandemic or actually increasing it also. Um, and so, you know, essentially when we look at it, we do realize that there is a great opportunity in the new workplace to make it hybrid, essentially for all these right reasons, right? And we've been working with companies around the world. We have done deployments over 58 cities now across 16 countries for some of the largest companies, helping them get back to work, but also starting to look at hybrid. And, you know, basically what I wanted to summarize was there are essentially three stakeholders. First is the employee. I think the employee is asking all the right questions, right? Employees are saying, well, I'm sitting at home. It's kind of a little lonely. When I go back to work, will I be able to work with my teams? We had a lot of experiences where employees have gone back. They've not seen their team members. They've actually sat in Zoom rooms of some kind and still been on video. And they're wondering why the hell did I even show up, right? So I think that is really top of mind for a lot of employees. I think a lot of employees want to know about what are the safety processes and procedures that are there. And essentially to the point when we are sitting at home, we're directly connected to the cloud, we have all the technology in the world we need because we've got video and other things. Will I have a digital experience when I actually go back to work? That's on the employee side. I think on the business operation side, that's where the hard task is, right? You've got the facilities people, you've got the HR people thinking about how am I going to manage this whole thing that went from 100% people at home to now hybrid, and that seems to be the way to go forward, right? Some companies are saying 60%, 40%, some are saying three, two, which is three at home, two in the office, et cetera, right? So managing that is a huge cultural shift, right? And of course, they want to use technology, but there are a lot of technology decisions to be made. Are there smarter ways in which I can do things? Are there better ways in which cleaning can be provided? Uh, what's happening to my footfall? How much food do I really need? Essentially in my cafeterias, how much cost can I save? Because a lot of the CEOs are turning around and saying, you know, you've got to think about cost and is there a way to be able to, besides offering a digital experience, be able to reduce that as well. And then forecasting what the future is going to look like, right? The business owners, on the other hand, are starting to think about how do I get my teams to work together? Productivity is top of mind for them nobody is going to take a risk on their business. So is this model more productive? Can it be more cost efficient? Am I committing too soon or too late? Because we've had companies that started on this journey to put in technology to start thinking about every element of their business almost three or four months ago. And then we have others that are saying, I'm going to be back in June. Is this the right time for me to be starting to think about these um, you know, essential areas, right? So based on all the learnings that we've had, we've put together what we would like to call a five-step success model on how to move from what was fixed uh, to all of people working at home now to hybrid, right? So I'm going to walk you through these five. 
So the first is to start looking at your workplace and how is it going to be more collaborative? How is it going to be more productive? Second is digitizing your spaces. The third is automating your manual processes. Fourth is just giving up unused space. And last but not the least, the technology shift that needs to be done. And I'm going to walk through each one of these, right? The first thing that we saw, so many companies started out in different ways. And I think they're all gravitating to first looking at their employees. They're saying, before I look at technology, before I look at what the workplace is going to be looking like, let me talk about my teams. I love what was said on the earlier session, right? Getting the right people to work together at the right time, at the right place. And that begins with looking at your resources you have. Obviously, looking at what are the times that you are going to put into place, introducing flexible working days and hours, really classifying your employees into fully remote. We have a lot of companies that are now saying, I'm going to hire talent from anywhere in the world. That's great. They don't need to be coming to the office. They're fully remote. You have others that are saying there are a certain set of employees that always need to be at work. That's their job. And so identifying them is going to be hugely critical. And then there's going to be the bigger chunk, which is the flexible workforce, right? And so they can come in on specific days. They have the flexibility. That's the second piece, which I think is going to be hugely critical. The third piece is now that you've grouped them into these different buckets, and I would tell you, you got to use technology for that, right? The world of Excel spreadsheets, and it's interesting when we started to do this ourselves about nine months ago, we started to write down on a piece of paper. My HR head took a picture and then WhatsApp it. That's when we decided that, look, we needed to build a system to be able to do this, right? The third was then just determining which are the teams and you know, which teams need to work together? Because once you have that, then you'll try and figure out when they sort of come in, et cetera, right? Uh, looked at the workplace and said, all right, now we have the teams. How do we create the right neighborhoods? People absolutely want to sit together. We've had incidents where companies with five floors and you've had like five people on one and six on the other, and they've been all distributed because they just went on some app and made some decision about which floor they wanted to sit on. And there you go. Um, you know, obviously people were sitting on five floors trying to look for each other, right? And then making sure that you match your scheduling plan uh, with HR engagement strategies. Somebody talked about in the last session, where's the party? Of course, when people come to work, the HR teams got to look at that and say, you know what, I've got X number of people coming in. I want them and they've been working at home for a long time. There are certain engagement strategies that we want to build and create, but that data has got to be available to them in real time. So they make decisions on how they want to be able to engage the employees. And I think if for most companies, if you get this right, um, you get the workforce management and the workplace management right, you're going to solve a huge problem around what employees are going to feel around how people are going to come back and how productivity is going to get resolved. But this is really step one. And I think of all the work we've done, this one's turned out to be the most critical one. The second is once you have that information and data with you, right, about your teams, you then start moving into digitizing your spaces. There's a whole bunch of data out there in AutoCAD files and other things, right? You've got to bring that in. You've got to be able to throw that into a proper space system, right? Or a workplace system. You have that data. Every desk literally is digitized, whether you put a sensor on it or whether you put anything on it. The intent is, you know, that desk, you know where that desk is. You know that it is digital now and you have full control over that desk. You then leverage on your digital plans to be able to create those neighborhoods and zones where people actually will come back to work. You determine the areas on which are, which are fixed, which are flexible, because in the previous step, you had done the analysis of how many fixed seating you actually still need. I still believe that is not going to be 100% flexible, and so there will be a fixed component to it as well. You then expose that data and, and all the seat plans and rooms and parking lots and digital lockers and all kinds of things, you put that into a tool because whatever it is, 
it's not about convenience only for the facilities people. You've got to think about those employees. We have some companies that have 40 to 50,000 employees coming back. And can you imagine if they did not have full exposure as to how they're going to deal with a hybrid workplace when for the longest time they were working in a fixed manner, it's going to be pretty chaotic, right? So to be able to give them all the necessary tools in an integrated manner is going to become hugely critical. And then obviously leveraging on automation because you know your teams, you've grouped them, you know your people, is to then automate the whole process of determining how the teams come together, which days they come together. So I get up and I say, you know what? I actually want to go to work today. Let me go and check who else is coming in. And is this the day that my team largely is going to be there? And then obviously leveraging on a lot of capability and looking at data on how seats will get assigned in the right manner so the right people show up at the right time. But that's the second step in terms of digitizing your space. The third step is, yes, absolutely, when we were at home, everything was available literally using an app, right? You had the ability to order your food, you had goods being delivered, you had cabs being called in. You pretty much, you're clicking a button, you're getting onto a Zoom call. And so you had, you kind of got used to using technology for everything, right? And so within the workplace, of course, there's the big component of making sure that your spaces are automated and digitized and bookable. But at the same time, you need to think of all those processes that used to be manual, right? Well, I need something. I should be able to go to the system and request for it. I should be able to track it. I should know what's going on on it, right? All service requests, whether you're sitting at home or whether you're back in the office, your visitors coming in. Cleaning, this is huge, right? Well, should we clean all the floors, every desk, every day, all the time? I think there are smarter ways to be able to do this and let a system do that for you as opposed to a manual process. Let the system make the decision for you in terms of what, when, and how do things need to be cleaned, depending on knowing how many people are coming back, what places have been booked. Same thing around F&B, right? You don't want to be cooking for or having your F&B catering for 5,000 people when only 50 are going to show up on that day or vice versa because that could create a little bit of a challenge, right? So looking at every one of the what used to be manual processes and completely digitizing that, but not in isolation. Do that in relation with step one, which is all around the people. Step two, which gave you a lot of visibility as you digitize your spaces. And then, of course, you introduce step three, which really is around automating your manual processes, including I think Phil talked about contactless and talked about better ways of entry, talked about digitizing that entire process also, right? I've booked a seat, I've done my declarations, and now I can go ahead and come to the office. Otherwise, you're going to have overcrowding, right? Um, step four, no doubt in my mind that, you know, at the end of the day, while we think of the digital experience for the employees and give them that whole seamless piece, get them nicely back together, it's also about the space. Before the pandemic, 100% uh, of the space was basically used 50% of the time. Phil talked about 47%, that's pretty close. Moving forward, you don't wanna be doing that, right? Because there was so much of underutilized space, which is expensive. And so how do you leverage on this opportunity to create that hybrid workplace where it's seven, it's, you, you give up 30% of the space, it's 70% of the space, but you use it 100% of the time leveraging on technology. There's a great opportunity for you all to do that as you come back and not wait another few years before you get that done because you know there's been never a better opportunity. And for that, you've got to leverage on technology. I mean, again, space management tools, absolutely. But let's take it to the next level where we talk about scenario planning, right? Let tools to tell you exactly what is going to happen. Well, what will happen if I give up so much space? And will I still be able to fit all my people? How will my teams get impacted? How many can I squeeze in basically at the same time? Do I have alternate locations that people will be choosing, et cetera, right? Let scenario planning, heavily leveraging on AI, be able to do that for you, right? Leverage on sensors to capture the actual utilization. I think at the end of the day, you want to know what the utilization is. And I have a viewpoint on this, right? Well, there are a lot of choices out there, right? And so you've got to be able to choose that appropriately. There are different 
kind of hardware devices that do different things, but experimenting, learning in terms of what gives you the best return, even from a cost perspective, but at the same time from an accuracy perspective is going to be huge also, right? But good opportunity on step four after you've done the step three to be able to give up unused spaces. And from a technology point of view, right? I've watched this industry on PropTech for the last, I don't know, about seven to eight years, both in a large company and I, you know, basically as well as a founder of Smart In Spaces, right? And one learning I've had is, right, there was a point for point solutions. There were very good point solutions. They would do visitor management. They would do ticketing systems. They would do seat booking. And each one of these little solutions, they would do what they were meant to do. And, you know, that's, the, you know, that, that essentially there was an era for that, right? However, today when you think about it, right, basically an employee coming in is going to want a digital experience. And for you to achieve your goals around productivity, around user experience, around hybrid working and on use space, you need to give them a completely seamless experience. As a workplace planner, as a workplace manager, as an HR manager, you need to be able to connect all the dots about what I just described. Otherwise, you'll miss out on delivering the promise that the hybrid workplace has. And so there is, and of course you need data to make the right decisions. It was hard enough when it was fixed as fixed timings. Now completely hybrid, disintegrated spaces, and obviously everything flexible. So the complexity goes up. And that's why I think the shift in the industry, if I were to think about it on the workplace side, is from those point solutions to an end-to-end -end digital workplace platform, right? Think about right from the time an employee wakes up and needs to make a decision about, well, is it my day to go to work? Do I go in? Do I have a seat? You know, are my teams coming in? All the way till the time the person comes in, does their, you know, check-in seamlessly, gets a table, to gets a room to collaborate, you know, gets to the cafeteria and does all of the different things that are needed, all of that coming together on one seamless user experience. From an analytics point of view, if you're getting data from each one of these different points, you obviously have a holistic view. And so when you make decisions, you get a view of everything that needs to come together pretty nicely, right? And that becomes important. From an IoT perspective, I think IoT devices have a huge role to play but at the same time, if you were in the point world and connecting too many devices to too many applications, I think that's going to become a huge challenge. In a digital workplace platform, the, the different applications work together, you know, analytics gets created seamlessly, and at the same time, all of the devices get interconnected into one single technology platform. That's where the big shift in the industry is. And where it's all going to is, once you set up the digital workplace platform, you have all of the data then to kick in your AI engine, right? Which makes recommendations for you. It tells you, well, how your team should get distributed. It tells you, it makes recommendations to you in terms of how much space you can give up. To the users, it's a self-managed experience. Get me a room. It looks for the best room at the best time for you. Get me a desk. But though that's the shift that happens in terms of where the industry is moving towards, right? But it's obviously the next step to putting in the digital workplace platform. And think end-to-end -end technology stack from the digital workplace about all of the different things. We identified about 35 things in a workplace that need to get digitized. Desk management, I think the utilization over the last, I would say six to seven months has been huge on this, right? In the beginning, Trust me, people will struggle with it on day one. It takes about, you know, three or four days to people to settle down. And then obviously they start to get used to it. And it's like going to a movie theater, right? You have flexibility to be able to do it. And then obviously look at workforce rostering, demand and supply and the expense and charge back. But it's a full end-to-end -end stack that you need to be thinking about in terms of delivering. Uh, and, and this has been a huge learning because we had pieces off this and we to go and rapidly build it up because without it, people are starting to struggle and essentially complain. Now, from a timing point of view, is this the right time? Why decide now? I think risk mitigation is huge. You need to be able to prepare your organization to be able to get people back to work. On the recruiting and employee 
pay attention. I think it's huge. There is going to be a scramble for talent. Companies that are ready to adopt hybrid in terms of workplace and remote are going to hire the best talent, are going to retain the best talent. That's been one big learning. I've spoken to enough of our customers, and, I, and I'm glad I heard it on the last session as well. I think to stay competitive, the, the CEO of the organization is going to ask, so guys, now we're back. How much space can we save? You've got to be ready with that story. You've got to have your plan in place. You should already have had enough data to be able to make, make, make those decisions. And last but not the least, you're going to welcome back, in some cases, 100 people, in some cases, up to 100,000 people. Really doesn't matter. But the shift to the human-centric workplace is real. And they should see a completely you know, sort of connected strategy, a connected workplace, and a fully digitized workplace because that will determine how successful you are in the hybrid space. So these are the learnings that, you that, that we really had. I'm going to stop presenting here, and I'm going to uh, open up for any questions that may be there. But let me stop sharing my session right now. There you go. Thanks. Any, any questions that anybody may have, you can put it up, and uh, I'd be happy to take that um, from you. Hello, Thanks. Dinesh. Thank you very, very much for that. That was uh, that was terrific. Um, are you hearing me here? Yep, I am, Torrent. Thank you. So um, we've got a few questions, but uh, I thought I'd ask initially: Can you do it in stages, or is this a big bang thing that you've got to prepare for and then go on one day? No. So, Torrent, we've seen everybody take this in stages. A lot of them went. They wanted to learn. They wanted to test. And I always encourage everybody, right? Test it, learn from it, put it in one location, and then scale it up. And that's worked very well for a lot of sort of companies around the world. Um, even from a deployment point of view, they will look at areas that are very relevant today, and then eventually. But you know, you you sort of have to plan that whole thing up front. Otherwise, you land up in the middle of the journey, and you realize like, oops, you know, I could not move forward. Right. So. Thank you. So Raymond, Raymond Chan has said, I think any tool will need AI as its backbone because ultimately you want the system to learn by itself what it's seeing and recommend how to do how to do the right size, the activity spaces most utilized and so on. And he says Dinesh is right that scenario planning will be a valuable draw in selecting uh, two. So do you want to comment on, on those two aspects? No, sure, Raymond. As, uh, and, you know, thanks, Raymond. And um, so, look, we Starting out small is good, but when you start to look at multiple locations, when you start to put all of this in place, you will realize there's a lot of data coming out, a lot of analytics coming out. And so getting to a tool that can help you make that recommendations, you can always override the recommendation, right? But at least there should be a recommendation in, play, in place. And because sometimes you're a little bit worried about making too many changes, uh, build those scenarios out. Let the tool tell you what will happen if you make those changes a little ahead of time. Otherwise, you'll get it done, and then you may be challenged moving forward. So completely agree with Raymond. And are most companies actually on this journey now, or are they all still thinking about it and dithering and not really sure what to do? So look, Torrent, we have, you know, it's interesting, right? This is happening globally. I think for once, I think there's some global alignment. We have done more than 250 locations now around the world. Every one of them has moved towards hybrid. And they have been through this journey, right? And that's why I kind of wanted to put it together in the five-step framework. Because at the end of the day, many of them started by just putting in a tool and didn't realize that people would show up and wonder, like, you know, where my teams are. So we started to rearrange things out. Uh, but I would say a big percentage of people are you know, have had some form of deployment. Many are at the stage of making decisions. And of course, I would say there's still a bulk of there that are just learning, uh, but will make decisions basically, you know, so. That's great, good. Well, thank you very much. That was a terrific session. Thank you very, very much indeed.